Amen. 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 Mighty Jesus, you alone art worthy. There is none that is like you. Holy Father, blessed be your most holy name. We have come tonight before your holy presence. Father, we recognize our sins and we ask for mercy tonight. Wash us with your blood. That blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. Let our blood speak life into your children tonight. Let our blood cleanse your children who have come to seek your face, holy night. Father, come and have your way. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for forgiving the sins of your people. Thank you for what you are going to do tonight. You have come to feed us with your word. And for that, we thank you, Holy Father. You are the great God in the Eucharist. And we have gathered in this place of prayer, in your very presence, to adore you, Jesus. Your word is life. And we have come to receive that life tonight. And Father, as your word is being heard, let it penetrate into our deep soul and remain there so that we shall be like you, act like you, move like you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The instrument you are going to use tonight, we hand him over to you. Fill him to the brim with your power. Speak through him, Lord. There is no one who will do this if not you. We have got out in your name. Let the power of your name speak. Jesus, come and have your way. Jesus, come and be on the throne. Lay your hands upon your son that you have chosen to use in this message. Speak through him. In a way, Lord, that it would be very clear that you are the one speaking. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. My dear beloved children of God, it is my pleasure to welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. And today, we are going to take our reading from the Acts of Apostles, chapter 13, verse 13 to 25. Acts of Apostles, chapter 13, verse 13 to 25. We shall read from the New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. Then Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Phega, a Pamphylia. In Pamphylia, John, however, left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they went on from Phega and came to Antioch in Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the officials of the synagogue sent them a message saying, Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, give it. So Paul stood up and with a gesture began to speak. You Israelites and others who fear God, listen. The God of these people, Israel, chose our ancestors 
and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, he led them out of it. For about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness after he had destroyed seven nations in, in the land of Kenna. He gave them their land as an inheritance for about 450 years. After that, he gave them judges until the time of the prophet Samuel. Then they asked for a king. And God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. When he had removed him, he made David their king in his testimony about him. He said, I have found David, son of Jesse, to be a man after my heart who will carry out my very wishes. Of this man's posterity, God had brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before he is coming, John had already proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his work, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he, but one is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the tongue of the sandals on his feet. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends, paying attention to the reading, we see how Paul and the Barnabas found themselves in Antioch of Pisidia. And God used them to deliver the message. The message of Jesus in Antioch. And as we pay attention to the reading harvested from Acts chapter 13, we see that it was God who was playing out his works using human beings. He used Paul and his companions for the mission that he had sent them to accomplish. We see him using John. We see him using Peter. In the Acts of Apostles, we see an interplay of God using human beings to accomplish the great and mighty thing. We see these people of God anchoring on God, depending on him, and always having conversation with God in prayer. And in any way they come, in every city they came, you find them going to the house of prayer. Always having fellowship with the people of God. What a passion to emulate. What a love of God to admire from these great men of faith. In every city that Paul, the Apostle Paul, found himself, you see him looking for where people were, preaching the gospel of Jesus. And we see Paul also talking about the history of our salvation to the people, so that they understand that the love of God had been with them. As we learn 
in Acts chapter 13, verse 16, I'm following, that Paul stood up and began to speak. Telling them, you Israelites and others who fear God, listen. And then he went into history. He told them how God used the, their ancestors. How God chose their ancestors, the ancestors of, ancestors of the Israelites, to reveal himself to his people. God made them great. He reminded them that they were slaves in Egypt. But it was this mighty hand of God that uplifted them from that land of slavery to the land of freedom. He reminded them that God led them through the desert for 40 years and he kept feeding them and clothing them. On the way from Egypt to the promised land, the people of Israel encountered so many enemies. God destroyed all of them. This was Paul. Apostle Paul. Reminding them their history. Incidentally, it is also our history. It is our history. God had taken us out of darkness, out of the land of slavery, out of land of bondage. And he had held us with his hand, his mighty hand, through the deserts of life, through the difficulties and storms of life, and he has brought us to where we are today. And yet we have not even reached our destination. We are pilgrims. We are in a journey. The journey comes to an end. In Jesus, when we come to Him. But for now, we are pilgrims. History is still unfolding. And this was what Paul was reminding the people of Israel how God never abandoned them. You know, first thing that God has abandoned us because of the troubles we are going through. Well, the people of Israel thought so when they were desert, even when they were in Egypt. Even when they were in the enemy's camp, when the enemy nations rose against them, and it appeared as if God was not there. But in each of these problems or challenges that came, God took care of those situations. And today Paul is reminding us this history. He reminded them how for hundreds of years, in fact, in Acts of Apostles 13, verse 20, it says for about 450 years, they had been on this journey. The Lord had been doing his work up on them. The Lord had been fighting the enemy nations as his people were moving to the place of inheritance. The Lord kept fighting for them. A time came when the people of, people of God said, no, 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 we need judges. We need our own king. And God provided a king for them. So, God gave them judges. God gave them prophets. God gave them everything they needed to know him the more. And they people of God. Why was Paul going through this history? Because, like we say in our time, if you don't know your history, you won't even know where you come from. When we know our history, we now begin to live our lives as people that have certain history. In this case, this is the history of God's people. Meaning that in this episode, in this replay of history, Paul wanted them to retrace their steps and embrace the God of their ancestors. Amen? My dear people of God, that history is still unfolding today. That God who sent Abraham, 
who sent Isaac, Jacob, who sent David, Samuel, Saul, and all the great men and women of faith, like Deborah, like Hannah, like Sarah, like Mary, the mother of Jesus, and so on and so forth. This God is still sending people, men and women, to this world to represent him. Oh, why are you trying to say that God sent me? Yes, God sent you. God sent me. We are on mission. We are people on mission. Amen? We are God sent. We are God sent. You are, I am. That is the theme of this message. I am God sent. And the Holy Spirit is now speaking to us using the mouth of Paul to remind us who we are. That we do not belong to the world. We belong to Jesus who sent us into this world. Many of us think that people who who were sent were people like Paul or like Mary or like Jesus or Abraham. But we get it wrong when we think so. God sent all of us. We are here on earth to represent Jesus. And that being said, we have to know our history. The history of our salvation. The history that God created us to love Him, to worship Him, to adore Him, you know, to glorify Him. And that even when sin came between us and God, that God did not give up on us. He sent His prophets. We killed His prophets. He didn't give up. He sent his own son saying, well, at least they will respect him because he is he's my heir. He is my son. They will not kill him. But they will kill him. It is that of love that God sent his son Jesus to us. Remember John 3 verse 16 that God loved the world, loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son to us. That whoever may believe in him shall have eternal life. Yet we rebelled against Jesus. Yet we crucified him. And yet God did not give up. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the church. He gave us men and women of God. The work of his ministry. He did not take away from us. He keeps sending his instruments, including you, all of us. We are God sent. We are sent to the world so that the world shall know Jesus through us. Do you hear that? <laughs> For this reason, we shall accept the word of God. We shall listen to the word of God. We shall behave like a people who were sent by God. To be sent by God challenges us to live our lives by the standard of God, not by the standard of the world. Because we are his ambassadors. If nobody has known Jesus through you, through me, 
We are failing our mission. Don't forget, we are God sent. Think of it this way. If the company you are working for sent you on a mission, you carry their badge, you carry their identity, you carry the authority of the company, whatever place you go. If in the environment you find yourself, you're in the place you find yourself, you represent the company, you begin to behave in a way that does not glorify the company. Of course, it means that you are not a good representative. The company would not be pleased to see or to hear that you're not presenting well. Many people have lost their job as a result. Many have lost their reputations as a result. And uh, because we know that it is important to represent the company well, look at how we do our best to carry out our duties and to earn good remarks as to be promoted, as to be recognized. We might even spend a long time maybe in the office, maybe do extra work, make a lot of sacrifice without even asking for a word because we want to be recognized. We want to please the CEO want to please the company. We want our boss to, to be happy with us. To give us good recommendations. But you see how we are very careful, even at the human setting, in handling things that are mundane. Things that are material. Material things physical things, worldly things, things of the world. How about things of the spirit? How do we handle our spiritual office? Jesus has given us an assignment to go into the world and tell the world about him. Jesus wants us to represent him in places he has placed us by providence. Be it in a marriage, be it in a, in a school, in a place of work, be it in a parish, Jesus planted us there. How do we represent him? Could it be said that somebody will see me and see some character in me that will make him or her to begin to desire Jesus? If the answer is yes, that's what Jesus wants. That's what Jesus wants, my dear people of God. We have been invited today to review our ways and, uh, and ask God to help us to align our ways with the ways of God. Because we are God sent. Because See it this way. If we do not represent God well, we can mislead people. Some would think, oh, look at how he behaves. I mean, if if that is what it takes to be, be a Christian, if that is how a Christian behaves, why would I not be a Christian? Why would I just be a pagan that I've been? Many of us have been the reason why Jesus is taken for granted by the world, by the unbelievers, when they are friends with Christ. We have decided to follow Jesus. That day we decided to follow Jesus is the same day, the same moment we decided to reject the world and the, its ways and principles. And because we accepted Jesus, we invariably accepted God, the Father, the Father of Jesus. Meaning that He's the Father becomes our Father. Okay? 
It also implies that by accepting Jesus and his Father, we are pleasing God. Because that is what he wants. But then also remember that somebody might ask, what is Jesus? And what is the Father? And where did I accept them? <laughs> where did I accept them? On the last day, Jesus might tell some of us, Oh, my son, you have accepted me. I have accepted my father. You embrace them. You embrace us. We are happy. And you might say, but Lord, when did I see you to embrace you? When did I see your father to embrace him? And do not be surprised. I will say that by accepting those that I sent to you, to the world, by accepting them, you have accepted me. Do you hear that? We accept Jesus and the God, the Father, by accepting those whom Jesus sent to us. There are people he sent to us. And there are people he sent us to them. <laughs> we are all sent. You remember the theme of this message? I am God sent. Jesus has sent us. He sent us, all of us, one by one. That is what we call the church. The body of Christ. The body of believers. Those who responded to the call of Jesus. They are the make up the body of Christ. So, Jesus has sent us the, his body. That is the church. The church is, you know, believers. That's the church. The body of believers, the body of Christ. He has sent us the bishops and the pope as leaders of the church. He sent us priests The, uh, the, the monks, the hermits, he sent them to us. The nuns, the members of your parish. Do you hear that? The ordained and the unordained are God sent. God has a big family. <laughs> they have sent the members of our families. We didn't come to this world, this world by accident. Do you hear that? Let me tell you something. You see, this message may look in our hearts like, uh, I thought that people like the Pope or the bishops are said. But you know, in the spiritual world, the enemies of our faith, the kingdom of darkness, they don't argue that. They don't even think about it. They know that these people are people of light. These people are God sent. They know, even when we may not know or we do not know, they come to fight us because they know that we pose an obstacle to their mission. Many years ago, I used to have a friend. Uh, we lost a contact. We lost a contact. You know, so many years. But this, my friend, was going through a hard time, very hard time, and uh, he was sleeping in the church. You know, when people leave in the night, he would come. He he would just find his way into the church and sleep. Early morning, he would get up and and wash his face and take off. A family discovered him and took him into the house. Changed him, you know, almost like adopting him, gave him a room, took care of him, feeding him. And eventually he married one of their, their daughters. I'm talking about somebody I know very well. 
So when he came to that family, every night, he said at the midnight, he would get up and begin to pray. He came to pray. And one day, he said, he, while he was praying, he felt like going to, uh, you know, to go and ease, ease himself outside. And from his story, it was obvious that there was no uh, place to do that in, in his uh, personal room. So he said, the moment you open the door, look at the crocodile. <laughs> the crocodile. And he saw a crocodile at the door ready to strike him. He, he banged the door. Fear came out to him. He was wondering, what kind of thing is this? There's no bush around here, no swamp. In the morning, a housemaid, the housemaid of people who were taking care of him, warned him. He said, look, this all those your prayers. You see, you are on this world on a mission. Mind your mission. Don't disturb me with your prayer. Mind your mission. I am also on a mission. Do you hear that? And even the devil knew. So the devil speaking through the girl. Knew that that young man came to this world on a mission. In the spiritual world, those who are in the demonic world, in the spiritual world, the agents of the darkness, they have certain spiritual power to know those who are, who are very strong in Christ. And they, seeing them, I grieve them, and they d- declare enemy right away. Meaning that the devil also has his own agents that he has sent to the world. So the man you see on the road is somebody sent. That's what a person could be sent by God or even by the enemy. The devil can send him to go and become an obstacle to the faith. And when we come to the realization of this fact, then we take our faith seriously because we belong to a superior power. The power of Jesus. That in his name, every knee must bow. Let us not become friends with the world. Let us not diffuse ourselves into the world. Let us not become the agent of the devil. In fact, very shameful is the fact that many that God sent eventually became agents of the devil. God has sent all of us to this world. But those who have decided to become agents of the devil make a decision to serve the devil and become his agent and obey his rules. Is God talking to somebody tonight? My dear people of God, let us be careful. Let us be vigilant. Let us represent the man of Calvary, Jesus. Let us do so. Let us seek him from our hearts. And if we fall, let us run to him quickly and reconcile with him. He has given us everything we need to be reconciled with him. He has given us the church, the, the sacraments. He has given us the sacrament of reconciliation. The church is fully loaded with the power. The sacraments of the church are amazing and loaded with the power. Let us make use of this sacrament and the sacrament house. Jesus is in the mighty house tonight that he has sent us to this world. Do you hear that? Jesus. Our neighbors, our co-workers are God sent. Hmm? 
They are heaven sent. <laughs> How about the enemies? <laughs> Those who want us dead, right? <laughs> they are God sent. Even though that they have allowed themselves to be used by the enemy. Then remember, God has sent all of us who are his children. But by our choices, we choose to serve God or to serve the devil. I like the words Joshua made it clear. For me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. He had his mouth. That is what we should be doing. That is what our character should reflect. Look at the kind of passion in Paul. Look at the kind of passion he had preaching the gospel. Traveling, not with the limousine, not even with the horses. Leg. Only God knows how he was sleeping on the road. He was compelled by the love of God to labor for the spread of the gospel of Jesus. That is what we need to have. Amen? So let us accept Jesus and the Father for they have sent us. Let us accept them by loving and obeying the church. By knowing and serving our fellow, our neighbors. You know? Eh? By laying down our lives, just like Jesus did, laying down his own life. He knew he was sent. By loving our Neighbors, as ourselves, by forgiving those who have wronged us, when we do these things, we are serving Jesus. We are declaring that we accept Him. Let us listen to Jesus. Amen. Accepting Jesus. Is not an isolated decision. To accept Jesus is to take all our relationships to a new level. To a new level. To accept Jesus is to enter a new dimension of human, humanly impossible, unconditional, crucified love. It is a sacrifice. To accept Jesus we we must make sacrifice. To accept Jesus is a grace. It's a miracle. And it's a privilege. And so let us accept him. On his own terms, not our, on our own terms. And let us be on passion to encourage others to accept him, to become instruments through which others will come to embrace him. Because we are God sent for that purpose. Mighty Jesus, we thank you for this message of this night. You were sent by your father. And you came to this world and you gave us your life. You laid down your life for us. You died for the love of us. Mighty Jesus, you even washed our feet, the feet of your disciples and apostles. You showed us the example of humility. You taught us everything we need to know about how to behave as people who are God sent. Yet, in so many ways, Lord. We disappoint you. We fail you. You knew it would happen. You knew we would fail you. You knew we would hurt you, hurt your father. And you gave us the church. That great institution through which 
You died us. You talked to us. You minister to us. You forgive us through the sacraments. You touch us through the sacramentals. Mighty Jesus. We are sorry for the ways we have failed to behave as your own children. Teach us to love. Teach us to behave as God sent. Father, we need you. Help us to live our lives in a way that even without speaking, our actions would preach to unbelievers. Help us, Lord, to be truly your ambassadors. Father, we cannot do without you. We want to live with you forever. For such is one of the reasons why you have created us. Father, do not allow the troubles of this world to take away from us the love of you. Help us to be faithful in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Give you worship. Who give you adoration. You who is the light of the world. Come to lighten our minds that we may know you and know you the more. Bring your light into us. Fill us with your light to the degree that like, a, like diamonds, we shall become light sparkling in the darkness that the world may see your light in us and come to you through us. For we are God sent. Father, we know that the diamond will not fail to give light. It gives off the light it has received. Put it in darkness. Put it in the box. It will continue to radiate the light. That is the nature of the diamond. But that reminds us what our nature is spiritually. We have received your light on the day of baptism and we are supposed to radiate this light for the world to see. And so, Lord, help us to radiate this light in the name of Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Remove everything that is limiting this light from shining the way it's supposed to be shining. May your joy, your light, your glory be in our hearts. Father, we give you worship and adoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Lord of heaven and earth. We cannot do without you, Jesus. Can you talk to God now? Maybe you have a personal intention to talk to Him. Can you talk to Him? He is here to bless you. He is here to touch your life. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. 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 Your people are talking to you now. We are sorry, Lord, for the times we have failed to behave like people who are God sent. We are sorry, Lord. Ah, Jesus. 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 Talk to him. Talk to him. There is no one that's like him. He's a great God. He's a great God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Talk to him. Talk to him. There is no God that's like him. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your holy name. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen, and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have done so much. However, you bless us today. You have done so much. Our precious God and Father, we praise your holy name. We thank you for a wonderful night as this. We thank you, Lord, for your word that has come forth with power, with anointing, Lord, with grace. Father, we thank you for your son that you have used tonight. We thank you, Lord, for speaking through him. Father, we thank you that he decreased and you increased in him. My Lord and my God, as we still stand on this holy ground, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the words that has come forth to the heart of your children, to the hearing of your children this day, Lord, will bear fruits in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, let tonight stand as an evidence for a testimony. Yes, that many shall testify of tonight's ministration. That after tonight's ministration, I received my healing. I received my breakthrough. That which I had been praying for had come to fulfillment in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you for the life of your son, Owakwechuku. Thank you for the calling upon his life. Thank you for your fresh oil upon him. Father, thank you. Every virtue that would have gone out of him, Lord, we ask you to replenish a hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, in Jesus' miraculous name, most precious healing name we have prayed. Amen and amen.